the sun is starting to set. I have made my adventure down to Wilder, Kentucky for one specific reason and one specific reason in mind. Today, we're gonna see what's left of Bobby Mackey's music world here in Wilder, Kentucky. They are going to demolish it. They have plans to demolish it this coming summer. And I wanted to document this before it's gone forever. So ladies and gentlemen, I bring you what is left of Bobby Mackey's music world before it is gone forever. Let's take a look at this place. Waiting for some cars to pass so I can walk across the road safely. These cars are flying up and down this road. Man, this is really cool being here. All right, here we go. Now, there is a ton of history here. We're just gonna kind of walk around the building and I'm gonna show you some stuff and uh, talk about the history of this place. Yeah, the Bobby Mackey sign right there on the side of the building. This place is under 24 hour video surveillance, but they recently closed. They got Bobby Mackey's. That is so cool. And I've come here to take a look at the inside, but from the out, you can kind of see through there. But I wanted to see the sign. Let's see if I can, right there. Warning to our patrons. This establishment is reported to be haunted. Management is not responsible and cannot. I can read it. I don't know. Cannot be held liable for any ghosts on this premises. Oh. Yeah, these doors are kind of old. So before we get into the crazy rumors and stories of this place, I'd like to take this time to talk about Bobby Mackey as a person. He was born March 25th, 1948. He's most widely known for his music. He is a traditional country music singer whose career has spanned for over 40 years. His music style can be described by his loyalty to Hank Williams, Merle Haggard, George Jones, Buck Owens, Conway Twitty, and even Johnny Paycheck. And it's the foundation of his music success. He opened Bobby Mackey's Music World in September of 1978. Before this site became Bobby Mackey's Music World, the history is a little unorthodox. What I'm about to tell you is what I found online and through watching a few TV shows. What I tell you could be different from what you've heard. I'm not saying it's true, but I'm also saying it might not be. I understand everyone has their own beliefs, so we'll just leave it at that. I don't need any negative comments or reactions or remarks because you heard something different from what I have researched. So I'm not sure if this is true, but I don't think it's really actually ever been 100% fully proven. But dating back to the mid 1800s, it's believed that this was a former location of a slaughterhouse. It was built to serve northwestern Kentucky and nearby Cincinnati. So in the lowest part of the building, there was and is a well that was used to dispatch the remains of animals that were slaughtered there. Although never actually proven, it's said that after the slaughterhouse closed in the 1890s, there was a satanic cult and activity took place there in the building around the well. It was rumored that animals and possibly humans were slaughtered here for ritual purposes during secret meetings. Now here's where things really start to get weird. There's a few different versions of this story, so we'll just start with the one that I know the most of. Most people have heard of Bobby Mackey's, have heard of the story involving Pearl Bryan. She was a small town girl from Greencastle, Indiana. The story is she was pregnant by either Scott Jackson or William Wood. Two names that are involved somehow. Like I said, there's different versions. But William Wood made arrangements for an operation for Pearl Bryan to get an abortion. Scott Jackson was attending the Ohio College of Dental Surgery in Cincinnati. 
It's rumored that Jackson was a part of occult groups that met in the former slaughterhouse. On February 1st, 1896, Pearl left home and told her parents she was going to Indianapolis. Instead, she made plans to meet both Scott Jackson and his roommate, Alonzo Walling, in Cincinnati. Being that Jackson had a little bit of medical skills, he tried to induce the abortion using chemicals and or cocaine, which was later found in Pearl's system. He also tried to use dental tools, but botched that as well. After about an hour, Pearl was frightened, injured, and bleeding. The three of them left Cincinnati and traveled across the river to Kentucky where they found a secluded spot near Fort Thomas. Unsure of what to do, basically, they just killed Pearl Bride. They used dental tools to decapitate her. According to the doctor, it was a clean cut. It was determined that she was alive when it happened because of the blood on the leaves where the body was found. The body was found 200 feet from Alexandria Turnpike, less than two miles from the slaughterhouse, but her head was nowhere to be found. Pearl was identified by her shoes, a Greencastle shoe company that was able to confirm her purchase. Pearl's head was never found. It's said that the search dogs tracked the smell back to the slaughterhouse. Legend has it that Pearl's head was dumped into the well and washed into the Licking River. Later, Jackson and Walling were both brought to trial in 1897 and were quickly found guilty and sentenced to death. William Wood was arrested later and charged as an accomplice. He agreed to testify against Jackson and Walling and his charges were dropped. Apparently, Jackson and Walling were offered life sentences if they revealed the location of Pearl Bryan's head. Both men refused and were sentenced to be hanged on March 21, 1897. It was the last public hanging in Campbell County. It was reported that when they put the noose around Alonzo's neck, he said that he would haunt the grounds forever, which is now Bobby Mackey's. So there could be more to the story. There could be less. I don't know. But it's definitely a gruesome story. And everybody has their own beliefs. Now, you might not believe in the paranormal, but to me, there is something, I believe there is something else out there. And being here at Bobby Mackey's definitely does not put my mind at ease in knowing that. Because the presence here, just standing on the grounds here, makes my chest, like, it's hard to breathe. Like there's something pushing on my chest. You can definitely feel that just walking around outside of here. It's pretty intense. So Bobby Mackey wrote the song, Johanna. Now on my way here, I was actually listening to it. So actually being here where he wrote the song, knowing it's about this place, just makes it, it's, it's unreal. It's definitely unreal. Now, as you can see, the state that this place is in starting to fall apart even more and more. The siding falling off, blowing in the wind. Looks like it's literally just about ready to blow off. But back here, you can start to see that the wall is starting to go too. That's crazy. Now, there are a few staircases. There's this one, and there's one right there, and then there's one on the other side. I'm not exactly sure which one is Carl Lawson's. Well, was Carl Lawson's. But it was definitely here on the premises. That is 100% confirmed. The sun is setting just on the other side of those trees. And also on the other side of those trees is the Licking River. And right here to the right, set of railroad tracks. Man, the history of this place intensifies the closer you walk around it. Now, I'm not gonna lie. I've been walking around here for about 10 minutes. And I can't tell you how uneasy I feel. Trouble breathing, heavy chest. My legs kind of feel like jello. The, uh, 
the um, uh, the intensity of this place is definitely is definitely there. It's kind of crazy because I keep walking past these shit, um, this siding, and uh, it's kind of creaking. So it's kind of creeping me out all at the same time. Now, there is in fact the exit to the well on the other side of the railroad tracks here. I'm not sure where. Maybe it's down there. I kind of see like a heavier, bigger thing of cement. Maybe, I'm not sure. But this is where the well empties out into the Licking River, which is said to have emptied out Pearl Brian's head. Crazy. If it seems like I'm having a hard time talking in this video, it's because it's a lot to take in when you're walking around this place. Now, my girlfriend decided to stay in the car. Probably good on her part because walking around here is just creepy knowing the history about it. But it looks like, uh, as I'm walking back up the hill, that a couple other cars have just pulled in. Looks like they're probably getting pictures too. I don't know, I can't tell. I'm not up the hill yet. Now, I'm not sure if these stories are actually connected or not, but either way, it's interesting. The slaughterhouse was demolished in the early part of the 20th century, and the lot sat empty until the 1920s when a new building was erected that served as a casino, nightclub, and speakeasy during the Prohibition. When Prohibition ended in 1933, Buck Brady bought the building and named it Primrose. After more than a decade of successful operation, the casino caught the attention of Cincinnati mobsters who tried to muscle their way into the operation. When Brady refused to sell, the violence escalated with fighting and threats to customers in the parking lot until Brady drew a gun on a mobster named Albert Red Masterson. He was charged with attempted murder and left the casino business in 1946. So the building reopened as a nightclub called the Latin Quarter in the 1950s. It's said that Buck Brady sold the building to the mob. The owner had a daughter named Johanna. Rumor is that she was either a singer, dancer, or she just worked there. And she apparently fell in love with a guy named Robert Randall. Her father didn't like it, and she ended up getting pregnant and planned on running away with him. It's said that the father used his connections to have Robert Randall killed. When Johanna discovered what happened, she poisoned her father and then took her own life in the basement. She went to a room above the stage and wrote a suicide note slash love poem to Robert Randall on the wall. Now, is this some kind of weird coincidence or what? But the man that was killed, his name was Robert Randall. Fast forward to today, Bobby Mackey's real full name is Robert Randall Mackey. How crazy is that? In 1978, after a series of fatal shootings at the Rough and Tough nightclub, Local authorities were forced to close the establishment, and that's the year that Bobby Mackey bought the building. So with that being said, there's so much, is this true or is that true? There are so many stories involved with this place, it's crazy. But like I said earlier, some of this could be true. I'm not saying it is or it isn't. Now before we leave here, we're gonna take another quick walk around the building. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Carl Lawson. When Bobby Mackey's opened, he had a friend become the maintenance and caretaker of the building. There's a story I read about how Johanna is the name of a spirit that Carl Lawson encountered. Now, Bobby Mackey doesn't really believe in the paranormal, so hearing Carl say that, he really didn't think anything of it. And actually, at one point, Carl Lawson was even supposedly possessed, which is just crazy to me. And it actually led to an exorcism, too. But during his time there, he is said to have fought possession, talked to Johanna, and struggled against the evil spirits that dwell within. There's even a video of Carl Lawson's exorcism online. It's also said that there was no story of Johanna being the owner's daughter. However, 
According to the census, there was never a Johanna death on the property, but there was one a few miles away. Another individual named Johanna committed suicide by poison, but that was long before its time. And unfortunately for Carl Lawson, he had a history of substance and alcohol abuse, which ultimately led to his passing. And everyone that worked there, hung out there, knew Carl and how much of a great guy that he was. So rest in peace to Carl Lawson. So as I had said before, I understand that people have their own beliefs and speculations about paranormal. Um, but I guess it just comes down to what you really believe and what you really feel. And with that being said, some people still believe the building's basement holds the gateway or the portal to hell itself, which <laughs> is extremely mind-blowing, I guess. But um, anyways, there are stairs near the well in the old slaughterhouse have been deemed the stairs that lead to nowhere. And there have been phantom footsteps that can be heard on these steps. Some people even believe that the spirits can't cross flowing water, so the rare northern current of the Licking River may be keeping dark forces trapped inside this building. So who knows? I don't know. All I did was the research, and I still find it crazy. But there's so much more to this place, and I highly suggest that people come check it out before it's demolished forever. Okay, I think that's going to be a wrap on Bobby Mackey's music world here. Really cool to see this place. Unfortunately, it is being torn down sometime this summer. I'm not sure when, but thank you guys so much for following me around and learning about the history of this place if you already have it. For those who already know the history, thank you so much for watching. And uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share. Let me know what you think about this place if you've been here. If you've experienced anything, feel free to drop a comment down below. I'll see you guys on the next one. Down the road, be safe. We've made it to Wilder, Kentucky, home of Bobby Mackey's music world. There are things in this world that we will never fully understand. Understand. We're going to walk by here and check out the door of Bobby Mackey's because it's locked because you can't get in. However, I do want to say for the record, if this is the portal to hell, I want you to come up out of that ground and get us. <laughs>